Meg Z right there in front of us, mate. Holy ship, 5.0, we're up to number five. We're up to number five. We're lucky enough to get a new boat every couple of years, and this one right here has raised the bar. For those of you that don't know, we're Fishing Adventure. We're a TV show here in New Zealand. We're doing it for 12 years, and we do a little bit of stuff on YouTube as well. Uh, so we'd like to have got a little bit of an idea of uh, what it takes to kit out a rig, mate. That's it, and this thing's set up to target your inshore species right up to your game fishing. It's an extremely capable rig. Absolutely, so uh, let's not muck around here anymore. Let's jump on, take you guys for a walkthrough. Let's go. Welcome aboard guys. Here we are, water's holy ship, you're probably asking. Well it's an eight meter Surtees game fisher. Surtees boats built here in New Zealand in Whakatane. Arguably, well, the best aluminium boat builder in the country. Yeah mate, they've got to be. They build them right from the 495, so they range from the 495 right up to the pinnacle, the eight meter game fisher, which is what we're standing on here. How good, now let's uh, look at some of the differences between this one and the last one. Firstly, starting with the outside, one of the major differences would have to be the wrap. Added yep. a bit of colour this year. Added a bit of colour and a lot of depth. So if you see this thing in person, it's epic. And that's thanks to the team at RA Graphics. Yeah, Richard uh, knocked it out the park. And then obviously the wrap done by um, Crafted Signs in Hamilton and now sort of where our home base is. So yeah, Chris did a mean job of uh, chucking the wrap on. Shows all the sponsors, but uh, yeah, it just looks mean. And it's vinyl, so it obviously protects the paint underneath. Yeah, solid, durable. And then for resale afterwards, it means you can rip that off and it's crystal clear underneath, so it's good. Mean, mean. All right, what's next, Michael? Should we talk about that uh, bad boy on the back there? Yeah. Check this out. All I the mean, ponies on the back. Oh, I mean, we somehow jumped the queue. The first in Australasia to get one of these Honda V8 outboards. Let's go have a look. Well, oh, check it out. Makes you uh, spin the motor around, mate. Spin oh, around. You give it a little. Give it a little bit of a. Show it off. Yeah. So you like we say the first one in Australasia, the Honda 350 V8 sounds amazing. Classic Honda though, like it sounds mean when you start it up with a bit of exhaust out of the water, but then you drop it down below the waterline and super quiet. Yeah, real quiet. And yeah, I guess just being a 350 V8, it's got heaps of grunt. So much um, grunt. And just that band eh? it's really good hole shot and then it's got that top end as well, but just freeze up around the back here. Our last yeah. boat had two twin 225 outboards, which were great, but we've just got way more room back here for fishing, um, which the single outboard has helped. We've got better fuel stats than the twin 225s as well, which is cool. Um, being the sort of big V8, it's not working as hard, so you can cruise along and uh, get some really good fuel stats, which is mean. Um, haven't tried it out on the Marlin yet, but I reckon that V8 Rumble has got a raisin. Surely, <laughs> eh? Yeah. TB, I just love the sound of it, honestly. Like every time you get to the ramp, it's just that fire it up. It's like next level. You can with a tour. I am, uh, yeah, can't resist. But yeah, you know, who doesn't like a V8? If you don't like a V8, there's probably something wrong with you, but that's all right. Just the sound. You don't have to like everything else about a V8 if you're that way inclined, but the sound is as good as it, it gets. Bloody delicious. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> But yeah, so that's the Honda V8, and uh, yeah, the guys at Honda got this in for us, which is awesome, because Honda haven't done a motor bigger than 250 for quite, well, ever, haven't done a motor bigger than 250 ever, so yeah, the 350 V8, as good as it gets. And while we're back here, just check out the space here. It's a fully usable space for fishing. Boarding ladders here, which lets you up there, and um, it's pretty epic, eh, Migsy? Yeah, epic for fishing, diving, and just everything in between. So yep, cage, ladder, solid as, rod holders, and everywhere they need to be. That one with a slightly more angle for, for our stray lining. Um, live bait tank, so lift up lid, generous size live bait tank with a high flow pump. We've got that, this little um, transom door, yeah, that pulls up. So if we ever need to back up on fish, you don't get heaps of water in the back of the boat. And then we've got our rubbish bin. Now this is also obviously a tuna tube and have one on each side. You can pull these out, yeah, using that as a tuna tube when you're game fishing. And then all the rest of the time, you've got a rubbish bin somewhere to put all your gunk on the boat and courtesy lights here as well to light up when you're loading up in the dark. And exactly the same on this side. Also great for bringing bigger fish in through there. Hopefully we get some of those soon this season. And uh, the deluxe bait station, CRT's premium bait station. Previously for us this was a rigging station, bait station, a bit of everything, storage. It's still got that, but we've got another little bit of a cool area which we'll show you in a minute, which is our rigging area. More of that soon. Uh, but yeah. Standing back here, you've got sea deck throughout this whole boat. Top sides, on the floor, all over the bow, the roof, the side pockets. It's a fantastic product. If you don't know what it is, check it out. It's non-slip, it cleans up really, really well, it's super grippy, and it's comfortable as underfoot. So yeah, wouldn't have a boat without it. Also, wouldn't have a boat without these bad boys right here. Exploding Fish 360 rod holders. Meg, would you agree? Oh, I definitely agree. They are epic. So, 
obviously usually you would have a fixed rod holder there with the fixed angle so you could only fish it one way but with these you've got a full range of movement you can fine tune it to exactly what you want it so whether you're stray lining you can line it up with a current or if you're game fishing you can have all the rods pointing straight out the back they're literally all over the boat we're using them all day these um, 360 rod holders so yeah like scott said wouldn't have a boat without it over here we've got our saltwater deck wash with electric reel sockets cockpit lighting and you have red or white on those which uh, is good for that night traveling and in here normally you'd see a whole lot of batteries but uh we worked pretty hard with surdies and lusty and blundles to get a, the weight down in this boat and part of that was a big lithium setup so we've got a big lithium bank up the front there it's all hidden away so yeah a lot of weight savings a lot fewer batteries but yeah as you can see in here surdies and their wiring it's always on point everything makes sense everything's labeled and yeah just super tidy work so we've basically increased our house capacity on our batteries by about 200%, so yeah, means those overnighters, nothing's going flat, leave live baits, tanks running all night long. And uh, yeah, it's all thanks to the setup, and there's a Victron, full Victron setup in underneath with that lithium stuff there, which is, I don't know how to explain it, to be honest with you. It just works really, really well. It's just lots of technology, and uh, it's good. So, two years ago on the last boat, Meg's favorite feature was the split lid chili bins. Sure split was. lid chili bins, sorry, which slide in and out, which are pretty cool. You like yep, it? Yep, definitely handy. Keeps... Favorite feature? Favorite feature? No, it's not the favorite feature this time. My favorite feature is in the cabin there. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, along with that, just above is this big drawer, storage drawer. You can use it for tackle. We've got um, plunger, all of our sort of brew related stuff there because coffees are always right up there for us. Priority. Making, making them. So the cabin, we, we speak of the cabin, oh, should we? I think we may as well speak in there. There is a lot going on in that cabin. Yeah, let's have a look. Come on. Well, the cabin, one of the reasons you have an eight metre boat is for this area right here. And we spend a hell of a lot of time in here, mate. You do, and there's heaps of room. We've worked hard with Surtees to sort of tweak it a little bit, yeah. free up a little bit of space in here. Um, but yeah, it's just awesome. We've got the lovely diamond stitching. Oh, that's oh. one of my favourite features right yeah. there, diamond stitching. Can you go wrong with diamond stitching? A bit oh, like a V8, really. can't go wrong. Yeah, if you like a Kenworth truck, then you're all oh, good. Absolutely, who doesn't like a Kenworth truck? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've got this real cool wooden table, Scotty. Yeah, the customised. I'll just jump jump in here. It's, yeah. This is actually probably a one person seat, but we're the size of one person, the two of us, so that works. It's um, yeah, fully customised table from our mates, our old neighbours actually, from our depot, King & Co Kitchens. Russ and the team knocked this up for us, which is pretty cool. Like it's, uh, yeah, super functional, looks really styly, uh, and it's a bit smaller than the, than the one on the last boat, which sat out about here, which means you can sort of stand here if you need to, and someone can still walk through into the Ford cabin or get to the dash, which actually happens quite a lot. So yeah, super usable this area, and yeah, real comfy. A couple of cup holders here as well for the all-important coffee and uh, yeah nice side pocket so heaps of storage there as well as USB chargers 12 volt socket and uh, port wiper controller so you're not having to pester the skipper because he's got plenty enough going on on that side Scott oh, at the uh, skipper's quarters. Hell of a lot going on over here hell of a lot it's pretty cool so the technology on the last boat was next level and now this is another level above that again um, yeah where do we start this this switch panel is just is so handy like where it is you just everything's at your fingertips and we once again work with surties to make sure that was uh, what we needed for where we need it bilge pump in the end there wipers etc etc everything where it needs to be um, wireless phone charger there which is pretty cool we've got two sounders or two displays now so we can run relief shading charts and our sounder on that one and we can run a different sounder different 3d whatever you want to do you got it all all of these are rain marine units the best of the best the axiom pro some super epic features on these things and the detail is next level the other cool thing about having the two screens here as well is that you've got someone can be at the helm focusing on the charts and driving if it's at night or something the other person can be on this one changing the settings of the radar or zooming in on the charts or whatever to sort of help with that navigation which is cool and it doesn't interfere with this screen but it's not only that whereas you've got three screens another one there which we'll show you in a minute so yeah autopilot VHF's right there, we've got the hydro tab, trim tab, which are a really, really cool bit of technology. Uh, the bow thruster, which we actually use quite a lot. Um, it's super handy for docking, works an absolute treat. The Maxwell anchor winch, bulletproof reliable, made here in New Zealand, fantastic bit of kit. All the engine control and um, display stuff is over here. We've got the Ultraflex electronic steering here, which is pretty cool. So it's a hydraulic steering, but it's got that these um, little digital modes here you can Press the different buttons to allow you to do different styles of driving, different feedback on the steering wheel depending on uh, what conditions are like, etc. So yeah, really cool bit of kit, and it's all uh, finished off nicely with the stunning Vita steering wheel, which is one of my favourite features of the boat. It's so nice. It's proper teak. It's not very cheap, but it's a cool you know, bit of kit. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. And this area here is just super functional. It's got the little fold down little stand there, so you can climb up, sit in the higher bolstered position, drop that down. 
get even more comfy. Chuck the autopilot on, chuck the feet up, and just cruise. Pretty generous Ford cabin as well. Storage on both sides as well as heaps of storage underneath. Um, lights all through here so it's easy to use at night. And overnight missions on this boat are an absolute treat. Got heaps of room here for your bed. Oh, where else would you rather be? Bloody good. But we use it a little bit differently to uh, most people, I guess, eh, Migsy? That's it, mate. So a squab usually sits in here, so you could easily sleep three across here at a bit of a squeeze, but we just sleep two, and then we've got Ben that usually sleeps in along the floor. There's actually plenty enough room for him to sleep there. And then Scotty's got his captain quarters up at the top there, Scotty. Yeah, well, I'm the oldest, mate, so I've got the oldest bones, so, yeah, I definitely need the most comfortable bed, and that is such a comfy bed. I don't have to have any issues with anyone rolling into me, and, yeah, super comfy. It's a perfect little zone too because it obviously doubles as the table and the seats and then you've got this awesome bed that you can turn it into for the overnighters. How good. Big boat like this you need storage and it's got it everywhere. So massive big wet locker there. Chuck our fenders and stuff in there and then there's a massive drawer. It's got heaps of storage in there as well. Um, close that up and then we've got our little cabin rubbish bin. So just for our, some of our soft plastics and our sort of food rubbish that can go in there without having to go out the back. Um, and then over here we've got our draw fridge. It's gone with a draw fridge this time, so just a way easier to get in and out of, and it's got a little freezer, which is great. And above that, built another phone wireless charger, because um, you can never have too many of them. And uh, what's well, arguably the piece of resistance, this zone here, our rigging bench, custom top from King & Co Kitchens, and this awesome design that we work with, with Surtees to do. The Blackmagic trace holder, it's got all of our trace right there, custom made for this boat. And yeah, all labelled up nicely. So you need a bit of trace, bang, there you go. Got a bits and pieces drawer at the top here because that's a super handy thing to have. Everything from your scales, your pliers, your scissors, little bits, hose connections and things like that for the fresh water. Lighters, all right there. And then moving down to our tackle storage, which previously it was in bags up the front. It was always a pain in the ass to get in and out. Now though, it's all perfectly in its spots. Different species. Mostly snapper and kingies, that's mostly what we do, but yeah, everything's there. But this is a cool zone, and it also doubles as a seat, which is pretty cool. So, just sit there, chill, watch the spread, whatever you want to do. Super comfy here, and a real handy little sounder out the back here, which is fully controllable, independent to the other one, but it also links up to the other one if you need it to. So that's right there at your fingertips, and that can be adjusted to suit which, wherever it is that you want to be. EPIRB right there, and another wireless charging station right there. All part of this little rigging bench, cool. And another one of the awesome features of this boat is just the ability for it to be all the way open like that, and then you can close it right up. It means it's super secure, because we've got lots of expensive stuff in that cabin, um, but it's also dry, quiet, and nice and warm on those cold winter days when you need to scoot home, and it's rough, How gnarly. Good. Yeah, and uh, of course lighting everywhere you could possibly need it including some pretty cool uh, new lighting features we've got at the front, so uh, make our way around there and have yeah, a nosey. Yeah, scoot around there and have a look. But um, this boat is also fully game rigged, so it's got Killwell outriggers, and it's definitely the best setup we've ever had. So real simple, and you can go like that, and your outriggers are down and out, literally that easy and that simple, and you're game fishing. As we move up onto the roof, heaps of rod holders. So we've got a triple stack rocket launcher, which is epic. We quite often fill this up, and everybody gives us a bit of grief, like how many rods do we bloody need? But we fill this up. We can be game fishing, we can be inshore targeting snapper and kingies, and we use all of the rods that are in that rocket launcher. So that's great. And while we're up here, we've got our, we can strap our dive bags up here. So tie down points everywhere we need them. So spare guns on one side, dive bag on the other side. And what that does is just keeps all the gear off the floor of the boat, and get it up here away, nice and secure. Hey Mick. Now this area here, check this out. Almost like a full sunroof, one on each side. These hatches you can actually fully climb right out of. So once again, up on the roof, keeping an eye out on the spread back there, keeping an eye out on tuna and marlin that might be jumping. And if you want to jump back in again, just simple as that. And the cool thing is when we are up on the front fishing, David, our cameraman, can be here filming us without him having to scramble around the front. We weren't previously allowed to fish on that area. David didn't let us because he couldn't film us properly. Now. We've got a license to get back up on the bow and make the use of that casting platform. While I'm here, let's just have a quick look. Radar, obviously this Ray Marine stuff's epic, like this spots birds, it spots other boats. It's a safety tool as much as it is a fishing tool. And the flare, of course, night vision for those harbours. 
and those sorts of things where you need to be able to see what the actual thing is in front of you. It picks up boys, it picks up everything. It's basically just a night vision, so that's pretty cool. Lighting there, and let's we'll move up to the front and have a look at what's going on down here. Great fishing platform up here, so rod holders where we need them, and you're a little bit elevated up here as well, so you can actually see a lot more from this space. Um, and then we've got our drum winch, love our drum winch, so the Maxwell drum winch tucked in under there, so out of the way, but accessible if you need it. Um, and yeah, rod holders, you've got the ladder, boarding ladder, Scotty. Yeah, this is a uh, really cool feature. Once again, just utilising all the space on this boat, practical as, just drop that down, flip that open, and then, yeah, boarding on and off. Also, I don't know if we mentioned on the last walk through video, but this also doubles as the toilet. Number twos, bit of a B-day at the same time, of course, if that's what you're into. Away you go, nice and easy, out of the way, private, and of course, more lighting up the front here. Previously, it was up on the roof, and we get a lot of light refraction off the bow rails. Now, with the lights being up here, nothing's in the way of them, and you also adjust them when you need to, so it makes that sort of harbour and docking sort of situation a lot easier. See where you're going. Well, that's a fairly brief overview of all the features on the boat. I think that's all, and we probably missed a couple. Oh, undoubtedly would have missed some, but uh, how about we fire up that V8, mate, and take it for a hoon? I think we should. We'll get back to the ramp, show you guys the trailer, and show you how easy the retrieval process is. Let's go. Trim it down to about 4%, and then hammer down. So this is where the old bow thruster comes into its own. I'm sitting a little bit off the dock, but I just... A couple of little touches and then we're in. Too easy. So, the boat's still underneath the epic triple axle G-Fab trailer. A few little differences this year. Obviously the workmanship's the same, epic welds, strong gussets everywhere there needs to be. Um, we've got slightly bigger tyres, which is great, just gives us a little bit more, a little bit more height, as well as I've fully customised the back of this trailer so that it can allow for our two kilowatt transducer which protrudes from the hull a little bit. Um, but yeah, a skid trailer which is great, we can get in there, the boat doesn't slide away um, and it sits on level every single time. So uh, most people ask us how hard is it to get this big boat on and off the trailer, well we'll show you how to get it on and it's pretty simple. Bring her in Scotty! So I'm just holding the power on here while Mig just hooks the D-shackle up. It's just to just in gear, just so the boat doesn't slide back off. Now once Mig gets some tension on there, I'll chuck her into neutral and he can uh, winch her up. You good? Yeah bro, good to go. And that boat catch is rated, so once that winch is in and it's clicked in place, you can just drive straight out, no need for another D-shackle. So there she is. A little bit brief, but that's our walkthrough of the whole new holy ship. 
Certes 8 meter game fisher. What a weapon, mate. Mate, absolutely stoked with the outcome on this boat. It is an awesome weapon, and uh, a massive thank you to the team at Certes and all of our boat related sponsors. Anyone that's helped make this boat happen, it's epic. Couldn't be happy, like Mick said. I've got some favourite features. What, what's yours? You got one yet? You pinned oh, it down? No, I haven't pinned it down yet. Oh, come oh. on, mate. What do you guys reckon? <laughs> favourite feature? It's got a few. There's some kit on that boat. We didn't show you absolutely everything, but comment below what you think your favourite part of the boat is. What, you know, I don't know. Something in the cabin? Maybe the motor, there's a few there. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. take your pick, let us know. But, but yeah. in the meantime, we've got some missions to plan and missions to get onto. Oh yeah, we do actually. And, uh, what are we doing, are we game fishing? Uh, why not, she's all rigged up, ready to go. Well, next time you see us, we'll be out there, hopefully, slaying some big fish. So uh, see you there.